Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's PAC program, I'm going to be looking at some of the top indicators that will help us to get out of this current bull market as close to the top as possible. I'm also going to be having a look at the ETFs and exactly what's happening in the background of Bitcoin, as well as covering the wider markets like the SPX, the Russell 2000, gold and the dollar. I'll also have a look at the 60 day cycle and see exactly where we are and where we're heading in the shorter and the medium term. So if that sounds interesting, then without further ado, you know exactly what to do. Get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, so what are the top indicators that are going to help us to get out as close as to the top of the bull market as possible. And just to give you an overall picture of exactly where we are in this cycle, we've gone past the hope stage, we've gone past the optimism stage, and we've just left the belief stage behind in the last few months. And once we and once we hit the 69,000, it was all over the media in terms of the big news that Bitcoin has now passed its previous all-time high. So this is the thrill stage we're in now. And this is the stage where the retailers come on board. This is your mamas and papas and your brothers and sisters and your uncles and aunties coming on board, telling everybody else, they've discovered something called the stock market or the crypto market in this case. So you may be getting some strange phone calls from people in your family who are trying to tell you to get on board this Bitcoin train. What most of the retail investors are not aware of is that we are probably in the last six months to 12 months of this bull market. And once they get on here, and increasingly all along here, as they max out on the cars, they borrow more money, they sell the cars and put everything in here because they've seen the, how the market has been rising up to this point. So it's very important we know the overall picture of where we are. This is where we've come from. This is where we are. And this is where we need to get off as near to the top as possible. Nobody's going to get this. So forget about it. If you can get this or this anywhere around here, is a very acceptable exit from this market. So that is the aim of the Bitcoin exit indicators. And I'm going to be starting a section in my videos regularly called the Bexit countdown. And this countdown is going to just cover exactly where we are with those Bitcoin indicators so we can navigate out of the market as close to the top as possible. And of all the things that most people ask me in the comments, the exit indicators are the ones that people ask the most. So I know this is something on people's minds. And what I'll do is I'll show you these indicators on a regular basis. The reason why the Pi cycle is the top indicator is because so far in the last 15 years, it has predicted the top of every peak so far since 2010. So we got this peak here with the cross of the green and the red line. If you want to go to the first peak even, you can see that before the actual moving average is started, the cross would have occurred just around the same time as that peak there. And the third peak within the first cycle, which was the actual top of that four year cycle there. So the first three peaks within the first cycle were all predicted by the crossing of the green line and the red line of the pi cycle. And this is the second cycle here. And we can see that quite clearly at the right at the top, the two lines crossed at exactly the same point. And if we move to the next cycle, which was the one in 2021, the two lines crossed at the $64,000 mark here. And of course, we went on to 69000 by which time the two lines of the pi cycle had diverged. So what we want to know is where are we now? So for those people who think that we've triple topped a subject matter that I covered in the last video, we can see quite clearly the red line is well separated from the green line. And this is our end objective where the bull market is most likely to end around about the end of this year. But please don't get stubborn in terms of the dates. We need to keep an open, fluid and flexible approach to the whole thing. Let the market dictate our actions. So this exit indicator will be guiding us that when the red line has been crossed by the green line, wherever that's going to be all along here on this journey up to this point, wherever that crosses, wherever that crosses, that will more than likely be around about the top of where we need to get off this Bitcoin train. The next one is the MVRVZ score. And all we need to focus on here is the red zone here, all the way along here. As you can see, all the peaks protruded this red zone, this one here and here. So this is what we're looking for. 
and currently this is where we're at. So we've got quite a long way to go. We use this indicator here to get in at this level here, at these two points. And now we can use this one here to get out anywhere around here. So once again, a very good confluence indicator. The next one is the Bitcoin top cap. And you can see quite clearly the blue line is going through the tops of each of the previous peaks here all along except the last two peaks back in 2021. So this is why we always need a confluence of indicators, not just one, but this is a very good guide that out of the last five peaks, this one got four of the peaks correct. And we can see quite clearly we're nowhere near the blue line at the moment. So we've still got quite a long way to go. The next one up is the Puel multiple. Now this one is coming very close to the red zone. This is once again, very similar to the MVRV score, but this is where we're currently at the moment. So there's still quite a lot of room to grow, but we need to keep an eye on this one. But as we can see previously, it can protrude right into the big red zone here. So this again gives us a lot of good information as to where the peaks are going to be. And the final one I'm going to show you is this one called the top and bottom indicator. It's one I haven't shown you before, and there are a few other things that I'll be using in combination with these indicators which I'll go through towards the end of the bull market. So all I would say is keep watching the videos with these indicators that I've showed you today. I'm going to be using with some of them a combination of other bits and pieces to be able to try and time the market to as close to the top as possible. So this top and bottom indicator, we can see with the green bars, this is when we get into the market. So this is the bottom. So if you look at the correlation between the green bars, they're correlating with the bottoms of the market. Similarly here, all this at this point were very good points to get in. Similarly here in the previous market in 2018 and this one here back in November 2022, this was given a very good indication by this green bar. And then the tops of the market, these yellow lines here, these were the tops and that was given by this red bar here. And similarly for the second cycle top, this bar here and you can see the peaks of these blue lines here and this red bar was the first peak that we got in the last cycle back in April 2021 but on the 69,000 one we didn't get that red bar here and that's because this blue line that's weaving its way through this chart it always gives a red signal when we go above this purple line here this purple horizontal line so once it protrudes above it that's when it gives a signal there and here. I know that every time I show all these indicators, people keep asking me the settings, etc, etc. And it takes a lot of my time trying to explain things all the time. All I would say is just keep watching the channel and I'll be showing this regularly anyway. So there you have it. These are some of the indicators that we'll be using along with a combination with one or two other things like the moving averages, which will help us to navigate out of the market at the top. And I'll do that in a section called the Bexit Countdown. Okay, just moving on to exactly what's happening in the background of Bitcoin and what's driving the market. I covered this green bar because this was a outside bar engulfing candle, which is very bullish. So as the market was coming down over here and people were expecting the market to go much further, as soon as we got this green bar, I showed you that this bullish engulfing candle has a 63% bullish reversal to the upside. And the way I use these candles is that as soon as I see these, I tend to mark them at the top with this dotted line and at the bottom with another dotted line. So that gives me the range. So while there is a 63% chance for it to go up, which is exactly what it's done here in the last few days, there's also the 37% chance we could go below this here. So on balance, it should have gone up, which is exactly what it's done. And that's because this is a game of probabilities, not certainties or guarantees. And it's our job to elicit as much information as possible by looking at candlesticks, by looking at the variations, the chart patterns, etc., etc. So you can see quite clearly that just knowing what's happening with this green bar gave us a very strong clue of what the market was going to do, that more than likely a 63% probability that we're going to move to the upside. Yes, it came back down a little bit, but it's well within the realms of the tops and the bottoms of that green bar. And that's to try and shake as many people out before it does this. So what is driving this market here? And people ask, why did we come back down so far and had this correction? Well, we can have a look at some of the reasons why. What we've got here, is the inflows and outflows from the ETFs. So this is your BlackRock, this is your Fidelity, this is your ARK, etc. And this is your Grayscale. And from the 4th of March to the 22nd of March, we can see that Grayscale was losing a lot of Bitcoins all throughout this period. 
They're all in the red here, all the way down here. But the total was still in positive territory, as we can see here, because the rest of the ETFs were buying up quite a lot, especially BlackRock and Fidelity and ARK. They are the three main ones. But going back to 18th of March, over here, there was a big outflow from Grayscale at this point, and the other ETFs were not able to keep up in terms of compensating for the big loss there. That was probably the biggest one day loss we've had for quite a while. So you can see with the total, it was in negative territory. And so this contributed to the price fall in Bitcoin over the last week or so. But one thing to note is that these numbers have started to fall and they're declining to the point where on the 22nd of March, it's come down to this level here. I haven't got the figures for the last few days, but we can see that the trajectory seems to be to the downside. But overall, we still had a positive territory here. And we can see with the inflows and the outflows here, between the 18th of March and last Friday, we had these in red figures here. But yesterday, we've now gone into green territory and the selling within the grayscale is now starting to subside. And as we've seen with the last couple of days, the Bitcoin price has started to firm up towards the upside. And we can only expect the demand for Bitcoin to be going up over the course of the next few months at least, because we keep getting very good news about what's going on in the wider world. And that is here, Qcoin is pioneering the first FIU compliant global crypto exchange in India. So another large influx of people who will have access to the Bitcoin world. And you may have heard of Mr. 100. We don't know whether this is a country or whether this is an individual. And they've been buying 100 Bitcoins, sometimes several times per day for the last few months. And so far, they've actually got a balance of about 52,000 bitcoins. So this quite easily could be a wealthy individual from the Middle East, could even be a country, but on-chain analysts from Arkham suspect that this wallet is actually from South Korea in terms of one of their cryptocurrency exchanges. So this demand from Mr. 100 is still continuing and sooner or later the outflows from the Grayscale exchange will get to a point where the supply is going to dry up. So we've obviously seen that on the March 18th there was 643 million dollars worth of Bitcoin being put in the supply. Once this is flushed out of the system, then we can only expect the Bitcoin price to go in one direction. And with famous people like Robert Kiyosaki, who is the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, I don't know if you've ever read that book, he's advising his clients to buy as much Bitcoin as they can afford. So this is when the retail investors start to come on board because influencers like Robert Kiyosaki and other people out there, once they start to get the news out there, that's when the retail investors will start to come on board in big numbers. So all we can see is a great amount of demand. So how does all that fit in with the wider markets? We'll have a look at the Bitcoin price a little bit later with the 60 day cycle. But first we'll have a look at the SPX. As we saw by looking at the 60 day cycle here, this is the midpoint of the cycle, the white line here. And this is the end of the 60 day cycle approximately. We were coming to this neckline at this point and expected a fall into the 60 day cycle down here. But the FOMC meeting actually gave a lot of energy to the SPX one more time. And so we broke above this neckline and we're now starting to see some sort of a decline into the 60 day cycle down here before we have a turnaround for the next cycle. So let's see what happens here. But certainly it now looks like we're turning around. But if you zoom out, it gives you a very bullish picture of what's happening with the SPX. We can see that just like Bitcoin, since the end of 2022, back here, we've been in this very strong bull market all the way up here. We had a little bit of a pullback at this point a 10% pullback, which is a lot for the SPX. But since here, around like the October time, it seems like there's only one direction it wants to go. So we may get a small correction at this point into the 60 day cycle before resuming the upward trajectory. And moving on to the dollar, I mentioned that the Fibonacci retracement, when I was expecting the dollar to come back up to about the 61.8, we got one more leg up with this green candle last Friday. But as we can see, it's come up against the resistance here and we're back getting a correction back to the downside. The thing to note with the dollar is that if we should get back above this level here, around about 105, that would really put the cat amongst the pigeons. I'm not expecting that, but it is something to be aware of. That if we do get above that level here, we could be having another drive to the upside with the dollar. So that's just something to be aware of in the background. I don't expect that. I'm expecting a fall to the downside here. And the Russell 2000 has broken this neckline. We found it as support 
and it looks like it's on its way back up. One of the reasons why this is of interest to me is that some of the Bitcoin miners are actually part of the Russell 2000. And as I expect the Bitcoin miners to be on a leverage play and to have a 5 or 10x over the coming months, I would be expecting the Russell 2000 to be also going up, being pushed along by, by the Bitcoin miners. And moving on to the gold charts, we can see that we've gone past this now at this level around about the 2000 and we're just consolidating a little bit there. We do have a shooting star or a gravestone doji candle on the weekly chart and that should subdue the price for a little while and allow some consolidation just above the neckline of the 2000 before I see the move coming to the upside here. So the gold charts are looking very bullish at the moment, especially when you look at the monthly chart and the monthly time frame is giving us this big Marabozu type candle breaking well above the neckline here. So once we close above that with a strong green candle here, we can only expect the others to follow in the next coming months. And that sets up nicely for the 60 day Bitcoin cycle. So I marked out last week that we may well have with this bullish engulfing candle, we may well have bottomed out here on a 57 day cycle low. And now we've gone past the 60 days. So we're now currently on day 63 and we've gone past the first line of resistance, which was at 69,000 as the first part of the confirmation that this is a 60 day cycle low here. The full confirmation will be at this level at 74,000. Once we get above the 74,000, then we know that this was the 60 day cycle low on day 57. So if we move to to the left here, the white line will be the mid cycle, i.e. 30 days from the 57 day cycle low here. And the red line here should be the end of the current 60 day cycle. And that will be on the 19th of May. So it looks to me as though when we look at this, we have a lot of room for this price to go into the 60 day cycle midpoint, have some sort of a breather, then go back up, beating the previous high, turning this into a right translated cycle, whatever that's going to be, before we make our way into the 60 day cycle low here. That, now that could well take us well past the 80 and the 90,000. So we just have to be aware of that, what the possibilities are here. But certainly now that we've got a tentative end of the previous cycle and the beginning of a new one, we've got plenty of room for it to grow towards the upside. If we fail to reach the 74,000 and get above it, let's say we get rejected there, I wouldn't be surprised of a violent shakeout to the downside, down to around about 50,000, 52,000. And that should scare the weak hands out of the market market down here and because we're so deep into the 60 day cycle end here that that would be the final point of the shakeout and then that would be the confirmation of the new cycle here. So just be aware of that. The probability of that happening are no more than about 25%. But it's something to be aware of. The most likely outcome is for us to get to the 74,000 and this time go and make a new higher high. And should we get this final shakeout, that would be an incredible opportunity to buy the dips at around about the 50, 52,000 mark here. And on the weekly chart, we actually got a close of the bullish hammer candle, just like we got one here. And what happened after that? This is what happened. So I would expect with this hammer candle for the market to be moving upside for the, for the Bitcoin price. And I mentioned two weeks ago when we had this indecision candle here, the spinning top. This is what you call a pause candle. The mark has gone up, it's paused here, and it's trying to make up its mind whether it wants to go higher or lower. And this hammer candle has given the answer that the market wants to go to the upside because the long wick at the bottom here is telling you that while the bears have tried to push the price down, the buyers have come in very strongly, which obviously then increases the probability that price is more likely to go up rather than to go down. And this is a wonderful candle to keep aware of simply because Time and time again, whenever we get them, they are a good signal for us to move to the upside, as you can see with all these long wicks at the bottom and those here as well. Always something to look out for. Okay, I'm going to move on to some questions I get in the comments that they missed this big move to the upside, that when the market was down here, I remember people were calling for Bitcoin to go down to 12,000 and 9,000 and 7,000, even all the way down to 3,000. But as I showed you the indicators at that time, just like the exit indicators. At this point, I had about five or six bear market bottom indicators, which were telling us that the market has bottomed out here. And we started this private members club based on the Bitcoin miners, where our portfolio 
actually encompassed all the prices that we got by dollar cost averaging around here in the Bitcoin miners, not in Bitcoin. And I know that there are many YouTube channels out there who still think that we are in a bear market. Even though we've had so far up to where we are around 70,000, we've had a 359% increase from the bottom here over the last 13, 14 months We've gone up 359% and I was shocked to find some comments where people still think we're in a bear market and we've just passed the all time previous high here. And if you don't believe me, let me show you. I'm not sure which channel this was from. I just picked a random comment just to show you. So this was just a day or two ago. And one of the comments in that channel was, was asking the YouTuber and they were asking, when will the bear market end? And are we on a bull market yet or still on a downtrend? And somebody else replied that since when did the market create a new all-time high in a bear market? So you can see that there are people out there who still think we're in a bear market. So I'm not quite sure what to say to people like that, but I do get comments that a lot of people have missed this big move to the upside with Bitcoin. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that we run a private members club here with the Bitcoin miners. And the beauty about the Bitcoin miners is that they tend to take off after the halving. So there is a second chance for those people who are willing to accept the volatility that comes with the Bitcoin miners. And the probability is that they're more than likely going to do what they did in the first cycle, and that is to take off after the halving. So this would present a very good opportunity to get on board with the Bitcoin miners now before the big moves start to actually unfold. And what I mean by the Bitcoin miners are these are the companies that are on the NASDAQ which are mining the Bitcoins. And we can see with this white line which designates the actual start of the halving, we can quite clearly see that going into the halving, the price was going down for whatever reason. And they've done similar things at the moment. They've had a bit of a correction here. But prior to that, they've already grown from the bottom here, at the end of 2022, they've grown to as high as 1000% already. But we know that after the halving, when the supply actually comes back down by a half, that creates a perfect storm for these companies to move to the upside. And what we saw in the last cycle was with Marathon anyway, around about 190 x to the upside. Obviously that's no guarantee that this is what will happen here, but certainly anything resembling that after the halving here, so we're just about coming to the halving in the next few weeks, if this is to be followed over here, we can expect some real fireworks towards the end of the bull market. So we're just gearing up and getting into position with the Bitcoin miners for hopefully a very big move to the upside over here after the halving, similar to what resembled over here. It could be a 5x, it could be a 10x. We really don't know. Nobody knows the future. What we do know is that with the supply coming down by a half and the demand, as I've shown you with the ETFs and the wider worldwide demand, we can expect the Bitcoin price to go much, much higher than where it is now. And obviously with the Bitcoin miners mining these bitcoins at a fraction of the cost, i.e. anywhere between 10 and 20,000, they're going to have an exponential move to the upside in terms of the value of the bitcoins that they're mining. But this is not for the faint hearted, because as you've seen here, that when you have the corrections, we can have corrections while bitcoin's been coming down by 10 and 20%. The Bitcoin miners have been coming down by 50, 60, even more percent. And the current correction we've just had recently in the last couple of weeks, some of the miners came down nearly 50 percent. And therein lies the opportunity because they are now presenting a very good discounted price. So it is highly volatile. It's not for the faint hearted. You do have to have nerves of steel, but it is an incredible opportunity for those who are wishing to take it. And as I've said many times before, there is nothing more expensive than a missed opportunity. And with the private members, what we do is we cover and focus only on the miners. We use the Bitcoin analysis to do the swing trades, but we're also tracking the long-term portfolio there and also do members requests. Now the long-term portfolio, we're just getting into position now for the Bitcoin miners to take off after the halving. So we're just positioning ourselves at the moment currently. And recently in March, we've been doing quite a number of the ratio trades by moving from one Bitcoin miner to the other at various differentials in order to get us more units to increase our positions going forward. And we'll continue to do that in the future. And regarding the long-term portfolio that we've got running with the private members, we started off with a capital of about 100,000, which grew within a year to 434,000 with the Bitcoin miners. And we took that as part of the passive portfolio for this year and a target of 5 million pounds 
knowing that after the halving, the biggest moves are yet to come. And currently, that portfolio is down 19% with the current 45-50% correction that we've had. So despite the 40-50% correction, our passive portfolio is only down 19%, but our trading portfolio down here, despite the 40-50% correction, is actually up 6%, all because of some of the ratio trades that we've done over the last few months. So we have a target of 5 million, but we'd be very happy with 4 million, 3 million, or even 2 million. So we'll see where that goes to, but you can't hit a target that you don't have. So it's good to have a target and try and achieve as much of it as possible. And if you want to join us in the private member section, all you have to do is click either on this join button below each of my videos or in the description box down here, you'll see a join link, the Bitcoin miners membership join link with this red button here. If you click on that, so for the price of a coffee per week, you can join us in the private member section where we do two videos a week, one on a Wednesday, one on a Friday, and we do updates and anything else to do with the Bitcoin miners on a daily basis. So we have a market update daily covering all the Bitcoin miners, and we'll be doing that throughout the bull market. And this is the journey we're on. We're currently at this point here, just before the halving, the red line, but this is where we expect the market to top out. So between where we are now and where we're about to get to, what we want to do is to capture the rest of this market. We've captured most of this already here, and now we're on the final leg of the next six to 12 months. Okay, so we'll leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and to click on the notification bell. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.